What's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. There we go. Perfect. In this video, we're talking about 10 things that you should know before moving to Canada in 2022. I made one of these videos last year and you guys really liked it. So I figured we would make one again, but for 2022. So I'll link the one from last year below as well. I'm gonna reference a lot of links, a lot of pages, a lot of different things, and I'm gonna leave everything, all the resources linked below this video in the description. So if you need to come back to it or remember it, you know, save this video, everything will be linked below. If you have questions about the 10 things in this video, leave a comment or DM me on Instagram at the Adam J Bell. I try to respond to every message, so. Number one is how renting works. And this may sound obvious, right? You rent, you pay someone money to live in a space like this, that's what I'm doing. But something you should understand is how to actually secure an apartment and to make sure you don't get scammed as well. And there's this thing called a security deposit, which is pretty much an amount of money that you pay upfront before you even live in a place or rent a place to secure it. But how much is a security deposit? Well, technically they're not allowed or supposed to ask for over one month's rent. For example, you're gonna rent an apartment that is $2,000 a month. Before you move in, they may say, hey, I need a, dis a security deposit of $2,000 and that's totally normal like they can ask you for that but if they start asking you for hey I want two months rent up front or I want three months or four months or six I've even heard people ask for 12 months rent up front then that is like most likely a scam because they just want you to send as much money as possible and then you will never hear from them again so it's good to just know that security deposits are a thing it's not weird that they're asking you for money up front. I wouldn't send money before you actually see the place, but asking for a security deposit is pretty normal. And that's the same with a rental agreement as well. Usually you have a contract that says what you can and can't do inside here, inside the place you're renting. And those agreements are normal as well. Make sure you read through your rental agreements that you're signing onto because, you know, sometimes people will put things in there that they shouldn't or that you wouldn't want. So make sure read through those and just know security deposits are normal up to usually a month's rent. Number two, what are resumes and cover letters like in Canada? I get this question actually pretty often on Instagram. People are asking, hey, how should I apply for a job? Like what kind of resume? What should I put on my resume? And what should I write in a cover letter? And so I've actually went ahead and created two templates, a resume template and a cover letter template that I'm gonna link below that you can uh, download, take a look at. And they're totally free, not charging. You don't have to do anything. You can just download them. Some places don't even require cover letters. So just so you know, a resume, you know, it shows your skills, your past experiences, things like that. And a cover letter is something you submit with your job application that tells the company why you think you would be a good fit at the company, like what you can bring to the company. Sometimes you only need to submit a resume, but when you start applying for jobs that are more sophisticated or higher paying, then you have to usually submit a cover letter with it. And just a tip, if it says a cover letter is optional on a job post, you should submit a cover letter because sometimes it shows that people are lazy if they don't include a cover letter when they could. So always include one. So those templates below will kind of tell you what companies expect for you to have on your resume or for you to tell them. Number three is also about getting a job in Canada. The official Canadian government website has a page that tells you what the jobs in demand are at the current time. And usually they're more like sophisticated ones or difficult ones like to like being a doctor, that's usually always in demand. But sometimes there's other ones on there as well so you can get an idea of you know what jobs there are a lot of. So again, I'll link it below. Now a really important part about getting a job here is realizing that sometimes your schooling or your education from another country may not go as far here or be counted for anything. For example, if you were a doctor in another country for five years and you went to school and everything, but you came to Canada and that school wasn't recognized by Canada, you may not be able to become a doctor here again unless you actually go back to school here or at a school in another country that's recognized by Canada. And that just means that Canada recognizes the school as like up to the standards of the schools here. So a lot of people move here and then sometimes have learn that they have to restudy or go to school here to be able to do what they were doing before already. It's not the case for all industries though. For example, if you're a programmer or an engineer, it doesn't really matter where you went to school as long as you can show that you have the skills. So initially when you move here, if you can't get the same job as you had before, you might have to start a little lower at a non-career path. You know, something to just like pay the bills and get by. 
Number four is requirements to actually work in Canada. So there's a few things you have to be able to do or prove if you wanna work here. So you have to prove that you are quite financially stable if you wanna move here and work here. And this is something that a lot of people on Instagram have actually told me they've been denied for. They check all the boxes, but they just don't have enough money for the government to let them come here with confidence. So I can't say exactly how much money you need to have saved up because they don't exactly tell you, but you just have to know that they will take a look at your finances and kind of like what, how much money you're worth and decide if you can come here and you know, they, they think you can survive. A few other things on their list is you can't have a history of criminal activity. You must be of good health, so a healthy person in general. And you have to prove that you have a plan to come back once your permit runs out. My Canadian flag turned off. Where did you go? There we go. Something that's interesting is that as far as I know, you don't actually have to do any tests or pass any exams to be able to come and work here as far as English or French go. Although you don't have to pass tests to be able to come and work here, a lot of employers wanna see that you have some level of you know English skills anyways. So it's good to do exams because you have a higher chance of getting a job, but just saying it's not technically required. IELTs are tests that a lot of people take to prove their proficiency in English or, or French. Number five are the different ways you can be accepted into the country. A lot of people don't know that there is a page, again, on the Canadian government website that tells you all the different ways that you can currently, you know, move to Canada. Sometimes new ways open up and older opportunities actually go away. So it's good to like look at the page once in a while because they can actually offer ways to move here that are easier than normal. For example, the page has information on how to bring family members here. It has information on how to move here if you have a business and you're self-employed. And for example, it even has this one, the Atlantic. Atlantic Immigration Program, which is pretty much an easier way for people to get permanent residency here. It says you have to come and live in one of the four Atlantic provinces and there's some other details and stuff, but pretty much there are ways that offer easier ways to move and become a resident. In this situation, it's pretty much they can't find people to work there in these positions. So they're offering, you know, help with residency to people who wanna come and live in those areas and work those jobs. So number six is taxes. Oh boy, we always gotta talk about taxes. You probably know if you've looked into moving to Canada that taxes are generally high compared to other countries. I think last year it was an average of 41% of your salary was paid in taxes. It depends how much money you make, but that was the average across Canada. So if you made $100,000 last year, you actually only walked away with 59,000. Some people don't agree with the tax amounts and everything, but most of the time, you know your taxes are going towards like good things. For example, there was a pothole in my street right down there for the last few days. I almost got a flat tire and today, two guys came who were you know, being paid through taxes and filled it in and now it's not there anymore. So I actually got to watch my taxes fill the pothole. So, you know, that's nice. The taxes we pay also go towards healthcare. So we can pay doctors without having to like pay up front every time. Not everything is free in terms of healthcare. We'll get to that in a second, but it does help a bit. The system isn't perfect, but it's not awful either. Another thing to keep in mind with taxes is different provinces have different tax amounts. I'm not gonna go into detail of what all the taxes are made up of and stuff. You can like Google it if you wanna know where your money is going, but in general, just different provinces won't save you a ton of money if you like move between them. But some of them will pay like a few percentage more or less. Forgot that it gets dark at 4 p.m. now, so I had to bring my light in here. Number seven is healthcare. How it works and what are the downsides? Because yeah, there are downsides. So the free healthcare that we pay for in taxes does cover some things, but for example, it does not cover medicine. One of the major flaws of the Canadian healthcare system that a lot of people run into is sometimes really long wait times. Everyone has to go through a general practitioner, which is like a general doctor. So you can't just go see a specialist. Like you can't just go see the doctor that you wanna see. You have to first go to the general practitioner who can refer you to that doctor. So it creates a funnel of all these people that need something and they have to go through the general practitioner down here and then they can refer them out. So sometimes you have super long wait times and possibly even years before you can see or get booked for a test for a specialist. But that doesn't go for things like that are urgent, like if you break your arm, uh, then you would get care right away. It's not like you, had to, you would have to wait a long time, but if you had really bad back pain, for example, and you wanted to see someone like a, a back specialist who's a doctor and like certified for that, you would have to get referred through a general practitioner and then, you know, wait a lot of time. And this actually leads to a lot of people who need specific 
specialists or help, they actually go to other countries and pay for the service there and then come back to Canada. So some people go to the US, the States, or other countries to get something done and then come back here right after because they just can't go ahead and pay for it to get done here. It's just not how it works. Number eight, becoming a Canadian citizen. How exactly do you do it? So this is how you could actually stay here forever if you came in and wanted to stay. There's a few things on the list. To apply to become a Canadian citizen, you have to be a resident of Canada. You have to have lived in Canada for three of the past five years, and you must prove your language skills in either English or French, so only one of them. So that list isn't actually very long at all to like apply to become a Canadian citizen, but the hard part is, you know, the the previous years of like getting here and working here and living here for three years before actually doing that. Number nine, how expensive is it? It really depends where you wanna live. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Uh, Vancouver and Toronto, you know, two of the biggest, mo most popular cities are the most expensive right now where the average detached home is over a million dollars for both. I'll put a graph on the screen to show a few of the different cities. The average detached house price is $700,000. So you can use that as kind of a benchmark, but in general, you can still find areas, like there are still areas in Canada that are cheap. I'm kind of biased about Vancouver, of course, because I live here. I mean, that's why I have so many videos about it, which I'll link a playlist up here, but lots of content on Vancouver. I recommend it. Overall, houses and everything is just getting more expensive each year, which I mean, that, that that's just how it works. But you can still find areas that can probably fit in your budget. Number 10, the final one, what is North America. You should probably know what North America technically is if you're going to live here. North America is a whole continent. There's a bunch of different countries that are within North America. Canada and the United States are just two of those countries. And sometimes people think Canada is part of the United States because United States is the name United States of America, but America is is bigger than just the United States. This one may seem obvious, okay? It's more just like a fact to know, but you know, a lot of people just don't know that and that's okay because I mean, why would they if they're not like from here? So the term America refers to all the land in the Western hemisphere. The more you know, if you didn't know that, which you maybe did, probably did. So those are the 10 things that I thought would probably be most important to know before moving here in 2022 or going forward. Again, I'm linking all the resources below, probably even more than ones I mentioned in this video, just to like be helpful. There's also those resume and cover letter templates below. And if you have more questions, shoot me a message on Instagram or leave a comment below. I also have a moving to Vancouver guide if you're gonna move directly to this city. So I'll leave that below as well and I'll see you guys next week.